The idea that Joe Biden said, come, they're there seeking asylum. First time ever we've told people they can't come to America. That ends. The cage is closed. The idea that Joe Biden said, come, we immediately surged to the border. All those people are seeking asylum. They deserve to be heard. That's who we are. We're a nation that says if you want to flee and you're fleeing oppression, you should come. The idea that Joe Biden said, come. And those who come seeking asylum, we should immediately have the capacity to absorb them, keep them safe until they can be heard. All right, guys. So we got to talk about a very, very, very tragic event that happened down in Texas in what appears to be a failed human smuggling operation. Now, if you guys aren't familiar with what happened, there's a trailer found abandoned out in Texas in which at least 51 migrants had died after being trapped inside of this trailer doing sweltering heat, okay? Uh, It appears that all of those migrants uh, were from somewhere in Central or South America. They were trying to be smuggled into the US in what appeared to be a failed smuggling operation. And unfortunately, uh, it seems like they, they died due to the heat conditions being trapped inside uh that trailer in the hot texas sun now two mexican nationals have been charged by the u.s federal courts and we really don't have all that much more information outside of that however i want to go ahead and play a news clip of this situation so that you guys can get more details about what's going on here take a look we begin with the heartbreaking situation still unfolding in south texas the unthinkable discovery inside a sweltering trailer People jam-packed, many dead or dying and crying for help. The victims, likely from a human smuggling operation, were found in San Antonio just about this time last night. Tonight, we know 51 people died because there was no air or water for hours. Scott Gordon is live in San Antonio with word of arrests in this case, Scott. Well, that's right, Brian. We've just learned that federal agents traced the truck's registration to an address in San Antonio. They set up surveillance and arrested two men as they left that house. The men faced weapons violation charges, nothing directly related to the smuggling so far. But of course, that could change as the investigation goes on. Authorities brought in search dogs to look for any possible survivors or perhaps victims they missed. They also searched from the air. The semi-trailer found full of dead migrants, towed away now. Last night I couldn't get a good sleep. Tony Bukanian owns a salvage yard nearby. He says he'll never forget what he saw. I look at over the fence and I see the 18-wheeler park with all the bodies on the ground. Yeah, and uh, so of course uh, they was trying to identify the body. La gente. Mexico's president expressed his condolences to the families of those killed and said the victims include Mexicans, Hondurans, and Guatemalans. For many, the emotion of what happened here is just starting to sink in. They're human beings. Angelita Olvera, who lives nearby, brought crosses to leave in the ground here. I'm a mom, I'm a grandma, I'm an aunt. I could just imagine when these families find out how their families passed. The location where the migrants were found here isn't far from Lackland Air Force Base, not far from I-35 either, but it's an out-of-the-way spot to be sure, and you can guess why it would be popular with smugglers. Brian? Scott, what do we know about the conditions of the people who survived? Well, about a dozen of the victims are spread out in about five different San Antonio area hospitals. Their conditions range from serious to critical, so unfortunately, the death toll could climb even further. Scott Gordon, live for us tonight in San Antonio. Thank you, Scott. Yeah, so obviously that is a very tragic situation, okay? I mean, when you have that many people die at one time due to what appears to be, I don't know, heat-related conditions, um, yeah, that's a terrible way to go out, especially when you are trying to get into another country illegally in order to start a new life, right? That reeks of desperation. These people were desperate to get into the United States and really they should not have made the journey in the first place and that's kind of the first thing I thought about outside of the fact that this is a tragic situation and you know I'm praying for the families uh, of the individuals that lost their lives but I, I just could not help but to just think at the time like you know again this is why you don't tell people to come right this is why 
You be real with people and you tell them, listen, if you come here, you're going to be turned around. Right. Uh, unfortunately, we're, we're not letting people into this country illegally. Uh, we don't have an open borders policy. Don't come. However, the Biden administration uh, doing the Democrat primary. I'm telling you, this right here really is haunting the Democrats. A lot of the things they said during the primary is haunting them. This is why you shouldn't say extreme things to appeal to the extremists in your base. But one of the things that Joe Biden and Kamala said during the primaries is that illegal immigrants are welcome into this country. That essentially under his administration, we will have an open borders policy. And lo and behold, remember, before Biden even got in the office, guys, there were large caravans of illegals trying to get into this country wearing Joe Biden and Kamala Harris shirts. Well, why is that? Because Joe Biden and Kamala Harris told him to come, right? They told him to come. And they did, right? Now they're thinking that, hey, you know what? Joe Biden and Kamala's rhetoric might have changed on that, right? For example, Kamala came out here and said, don't come. But you still have progressives like AOC that come out here and say, no, 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 you should come. That we should be accepting all illegals into this country, okay? And I think, again, that has severe consequences like what we're seeing here. Speaking of progressives, um, I was actually pleasantly surprised to see MSNBC... Uh, host Joe Scarborough who allegedly was a Republican back in the day but now he's an independent but he basically is a Democrat at this point in terms of you know who he agrees with the most uh, he actually came out here and rent progressives on their open borders policies in connection with what happened with this migrant crisis take a look it's one thing I don't understand uh, it, it, it's kind of like when I talk about homelessness, there's nothing progressive about having people uh, sleeping in 10 degree weather, sleeping on grates. That's not progressive. There's also nothing progressive about encouraging migrants to risk their lives going across the desert. Uh, to come into the United States illegally. There was a special election just a couple of weeks ago down along a border uh, district, uh, a place where a Republican hadn't won in a very long time, and a Republican took that took that district. So there, we've talked about this with progressive pollsters, by the way, who say this idea that Latino voters in America are all in, and they're, they have this open mind, and they'll go with Democrats wherever they go on immigration is just wrong. It's just it's just folly, and it's not true, and it's patronizing in many ways to make those assumptions. So yeah, Democrats will have to reassess because some of them may not want to use the word crisis, but it's exactly what it is down along the border when you have Customs and Border Patrol having 7,000, 8,000 encounters and apprehensions a day on the border. That is a crisis. Yeah, so they're kind of keeping it 100. They're keeping it 100 on this, surprisingly, because you low-key can kind of place some blame on the progressive rhetoric that has been coming from the Democrat Party that Joe Biden and Kamala Harris endorsed during the primaries telling migrants to come to America, right? Just come. Right. Trump is such a bad person. Trump is bad for telling you not to come. OK, he's evil. Right. Um, they said come. OK. And then what happens is, is that you have these coyotes, these smugglers, these gangs that are making a killing off of uh, trying to smuggle people into the United States. And a lot of times these migrants don't make it right. They end up getting trafficked to, you know, parts of Mexico and some other places. You know, they end up becoming, I don't know, you know sex workers and all that type of stuff like you know there's crazy stuff that happens to uh these people who are desperately trying to get into the united states and listen look i am not against immigration right i'm for immigration but i'm for immigration legally right come here legally because coming here legally is safe we have to have strong borders and our borders have to be closed we can't be letting people in here we don't know who they are it is what it is i mean this truck allegedly Pass right by the border checkpoint, right? Uh, for whatever reason, the border patrol agents or whoever didn't check the back of this truck to see uh, who was in it, right? To see if there was smuggling migrants into the country. Okay, I, I don't understand how that happens, right? But again, I'm not necessarily trying to go as far as some people are and trying to place direct blame on Joe Biden uh, because, you know, at the end of the day, I mean, something tragic like this happened. I don't really like placing direct blame on politicians. Uh, because again, th this is like an individual type of situation. However, I, I can say that when you encourage people to come here illegally, 
what you essentially are encouraging is stuff like this to happen because this will happen when you're telling people to come. Uh, when you tell people not to come and when you are stern about it, when your border policies are actually strong and you're turning people away like Trump, right? When you're telling people straight up, you come here, uh, yeah, you're not going to be treated nicely. You're going to have to wait in Mexico. Again, it sounds bad, but what happens is that people say, hey, you know what? That guy Trump, he ain't playing around, right? Uh, he will make me wait in Mexico, right? He will not let me into the country, so therefore I'm not going to make the trip, right? And if they don't make the trip, what that does is that it makes it so incidents like this are less likely to happen, okay um and, and that's just the reality of the situation the, the thing about progressives is that they live in cuckoo for cocoa puff la la world where they don't believe that things like this happen okay they just think that the people come over here and you know they're leaving these war-torn countries and you know nothing bad happens to them on the way right that, that that's what they believe right and that's why they openly tell people to come and that we're going to take you in and that's just not the case it's just not the case man it's just not. Again, um, look, in the ideal world, hey, we can take everybody. However, this is not the ideal world. You have criminals. You have people. We don't know who they are. We don't know what they're bringing. We don't know anything about them. We can't let them into the country. I'm sorry. We have to have strict border policies. Um, and, you know, that's just it is what it is. It is what it is. Some people got to deal with their problems in their home countries. Right. I'm just saying. But let me know what you guys think. Make sure you like, comment and subscribe. Most importantly, share a black conservative perspective. Peace.